Oh yeah, friends and fam, welcome back to another episode of Captain Coleslaw Outdoors with yours truly. And tonight we are doing something very special, something very close to my heart and part of my childhood. We're catfishing. Catfishing is kind of like a subdivision of fishing altogether. There's actually different types of catfish, but you chase them all in kind of a similar type of way. Let me give you a, a quick biological lowdown of what you're about to get into. So every summer, the first full moon of August triggers the end of the big catfish nesting period here east of the Mississippi, at least from what I have found. That means that the big flathead catfish and the big channel catfish and blue catfish of the eastern shoreboard come off their nests. They lose their maternal instinct. They're not guarding their babies. So catfish live in a burrow for basically a month guarding their eggs and developing offspring, but they gotta go out and feed at some point and they could lose their paternal instincts very, very much right now. So this post full moon period is when the big cats come off their nests and come out of their beds and they seek desirable, delicious morsels from the depths. And we're gonna give them that tonight. I'm going to pick up Christian. We're gonna go out to a river system where there's a bunch of log jams and fallen timber. And that's where the catfish like to nest. So these catfish, as they're arising from their burrows, they're gonna be out feeding. And they love to come out under the cover of darkness. And they love high rising dirty water levels because their food, which is typically fish species that rely on sight for navigation, feel disoriented. It's dark, the water level's rising, they move up to the shore to get out of the current and they don't move because they can't see where they're going. Well, their scent travels down river and as those fish in their scared state remain in the same place for long periods of time, it allows channel catfish, flathead catfish, bullhead catfish to find prey easier because they can actually taste the scent of the other living fish in the environment with those organs you see hanging off their face called barbels, like vultures or hound dogs or whatever you want to think of. And they will find that prey and eat it. And a big smelly dead minnow is just the trick. I got a whole bag of them. I'm going to go pick up Christian right now and we're going to go get some catfish under the cover of darkness. Let's hope it works. I think we'll get some action tonight. It's time. It's time for a big cat safari. Oh, going for some big ones. oh baby. Tonight is the night that I've honestly been waiting for since June. We didn't really get to fish the pre-spawn at all. I knew catfishing for like the big girls is basically non-existent. But the summer equinox full moon has passed us. It's time. It's time. <laughs> He's looking at me like, you science nerd. <laughs> Alright, so here's the situation. We're out here on the creek. A lot of overhead tree cover. A lot of overhead tree cover and it's pretty stinking dark out here. We're gonna be using cut creek chubs that I've got and I froze. Freezing them after not using them from before will allow the scent to kind of travel out through the water as they thaw and you can catch multiple fish on them before they get all gushy. Let's just throw them out and throw them on the shore, throw them across, throw them downstream and the more lines out there the better chance we have of getting one. Any famous last words? Yeet. Check out the bait situation here. These are actually frozen shiners. That'll work just fine. Stick one or two of them on a hook and reel them in. Looks yummy to me. All How right. Perfect. Not far, but down by that fallen yeah, root system, the first one right here. And I throw another one right under that, that uh, here, here, like where I'm looking. No, not even underneath, like, you get this shoreline, because those big trees, 
Oh, trees are there? Right here? Yeah, one right there, like 20 feet off, and then one under that low branch that my light is on. I got a big old four ounce sinker on with a big old circle hook, eight aught, and two dead shiners. Hoping that's the juice for some kitties. It's called like, like Suge Lang or something. Can you imagine if you were like River Monsters, Jeremy Wade, and this is how you had to do everything? With like bugs flying around you in the light and stuff? You talk to him, shade as much as that man, that would do a whole lot worse. <laughs> and he has. <laughs> really bought a new TV stand and she was hoping you could help you get in a crush. Yeah. Hold on. That is a cat, my friend. You better get him before he gets in a stick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Keep that tip up. Keep that tip up. Yeah. Keep him out of the sticks. Oh yeah. What a run. Yeah. There he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, did you see all those minis jump? Yeah. What is that? That ain't no... It's not a flathead, is it? No. Oh, my God. That is a white bullhead, my friend. Oh, yeah. Dude. That's a cool fish. Look at that. That's a stud for that species, too. Oh my, look at that. So these white bullheads, believe it or not, are indigenous to Loyal Hanna Lake. Like they're only found in pockets of Philadelphia area, local, on like the eastern seaboard. Like and here. here. That's sick, dude. That is awesome. Good job, man. Thank you. Wasn't expecting a white cat. We're on the board, baby. We got one kitty. Let's get another, man. Let's get some more. Oh, I didn't know turtle. That's a bullhead. There we go. There's a bullhead. Yeah, circle hook did his job. Of course, of course he swallowed it. Ooh, floppy little bugger. Oh yeah. I do. You know, the typical. Eats it alive, chokes it. Here, I'm gonna sit down. Oh yeah, classic bullhead action. Got one bullhead, now we gotta reel in the other bullhead. Oh, yeah. Or there's one. There's always more fun. That's a fatty. Now that is a good bullhead. Another yellow bullhead. Nice one. Nice fatty. That's about as good as these fish are going to get. Where are all the fish? I don't know. They're at college waiting for you. Hopefully. <laughs> well, if nothing else, good luck to this guy. Go kill it. You're going to Susquehanna. Maybe he'll even send some footage of fish being caught out there. I might become a YouTuber myself. An update would be an epic bit. I could make an episode on that. All I need is you just catching something. Dude, come up here. This guy's got ideas. <laughs> All right, like and subscribe. Thanks for so much for watching this episode. We're heading out. Until next time. Let's catch some bullheads next time. That's it. We'll catch you later.